All right, so today I'm going to unbox, set up, and do a quick review of this HPE Networking Instant On Access Point. So this is really tailored towards a small business, either an office, coffee shop, that kind of place, that you don't have your own IT department, so you want something that's straightforward and easy, but you want some controls and capability that you need as a business unit that maybe you don't get from a consumer device or from your internet service provider that you have today. So, you know, this example, this is just a T-Mobile uh, 5G modem, and, you know, you could have a cable modem, fiber modem, whatever type of internet you have, you still use that, but you will then plug in an ethernet cord from your uh, modem to this access point, and you can have just one of these, like I have here today, or you can actually combine them, you can have dozens of these uh, for a large warehouse or whatnot, if that's what your needs are. So it's very configurable to how you need your business set up. So let me just unbox it and show you how quick and easy the setup is with the app, and then we can go through some of the performance. Okay, so in the box itself, there's not a whole lot to it. There is a mounting plate, so this is what you get screwed to the wall or to the ceiling. And then that allows you to take this device and it uh, locks into place here. Um, it has kind of a centering thing and then you rotate it and twist it and that's how it clips on. And then you can also unclip it, rotate it off and then it, that's how it detaches. And then this comes with a, a short uh, ethernet cable. Now there are actually two, I think, uh, packaging um, options you can get with this. This one is the, I, I, don't know, I forget what they call it, but it's like the base package. And then they have a second package that includes um, your um, 12 volt adapter if you need it. This is set up to be power over ethernet. So this would be plugged into either a PoE switch or some other uh, source that creates that uh, power injection. You can obviously have just a little um, PoE injector as well uh, for this. But so this one here is their AP25 unit. So this is their most powerful indoor unit that they make. This is up to like two times faster from a bandwidth capability than their AP22 unit. And it is also a larger form factor. The other ones are probably about two thirds this size. But this one has really good capability. It can do you know over five gigabits per second of combined uh, wireless transmission um, network. The uh, Ethernet port on it itself is a 2.5 gigabit per second Ethernet port for uplink. And then these can act either as a wired AP or they can be a wireless mesh. So you can hook these up um, wirelessly from one to another and extend your network that way. Um, I typically always encourage you to always use Ethernet if you have that option, but obviously sometimes that's not a easy option to do. So this does give you the flexibility to do that. So uh, what else they include in here is a quick start guide. So this is just a little pamphlet that basically has uh, a QR code to go download their app and then um, launch the app and you follow the instructions to add a device. There are some barcodes and stuff you can scan. And then they do have a quick startup guide as well. It's a little bit more uh, detailed, but not really that much more. It talks about some of the regulatory uh, requirements. It gives you a QR code uh, for the installation, and then it gives you a, uh, that's a big link to a, a full guide online that you can get. And before we get too far, I must say this is Nate, and this is the Nader Tater channel. I do appreciate all my viewers tuning in, and I do also much appreciate a thumbs up button if you like this video. Just hit it right down below in YouTube. And then also consider subscribing to my channel if you like this content and you want to see more like it. Now, if you're interested in one of these products, do uh, look down below in the video description or the first comment where I do put a link and that was where you can get the best deal on these products. And do know that they do come with a multi-year warranty and you also get uh, free 24-7 tech support uh, when you first start out so that you can get uh, that help if you do need it. But really, it is pretty straightforward uh, to go through this and use it yourself. That's what I do like about this HPE Networking Instant On uh, setup. Okay, so for this demonstration, I have my Ethernet cable plugged in here. This goes into my uh, main closet for all my internet, so that's plugged directly into my modem from my ISP. And then uh, for this setup, just so I can do it out here, I have a, a correct 12-volt, uh, 1.5 amp um, adapter here that I can plug into the back of the unit there so that my Ethernet cable doesn't have to give PoE. Now you can see that red light uh, just started to flash there and now it's got a green light. So now I can start to open up the app, follow the instructions to get this set up. Alright, so this is a Android tablet and I just went in you can scan again this QR code and it'll get you to it. But you can also just search in the Google Play Store, the App Store, the HPE Networking Instant On 
app and then you can open this app up now if you haven't made an account uh, this is your first time then you obviously need to create one or if you already have one you just sign in okay so for me I already have a site but I want to create a new site I said create a new site I named it and now it's asking for a device so I can type in a serial number manually or you can see here there that there is two other options you can scan a barcode or Bluetooth I guess I'm just gonna try to scan the barcode and see how that works here so I should be able to just take this and point it at this barcode right here and it's gonna find that serial number for me and then I can click continue okay so there it did find it instantly so I can just click add devices and this is where I need to tell it if it's an additional access point or if it's my primary Wi-Fi router so for this one because this is my only device I'm setting up this is going to be my primary Wi-Fi router and it's going to do other features like assigning IP addresses and whatnot um, and it's going to be my main one that's going to own um, the information for like what the Wi-Fi name is going to be and different controls if I were to add more I would add them as just an access point and they would mimic whatever features I set up in this main one so for this main one primary Wi-Fi router is what I'm going to do you can see all that information we can hit create all right, so let's go in here to the settings. I'm going to click on these devices, and you can see right now what it's doing on this one is that it's synchronizing. So it's probably trying to connect to the Internet, and then it looks like it's doing an update now, so it's going to update the firmware. And then hopefully we'll be set up here in just a minute. We can go into the advanced settings. All right, there we go. So it took about three minutes for it to do its boot up, but now I can see that both green lights are on, and I can go over here, and I can see that the health is 100% good. But I have no network set up or anything, so I'm going to go in here and set up a network. All right, so here I can create the network. Now, the top choice there is either an employee or a guest usage. So this is really cool because now you can set up, you know, your own office employee network and then a guest network, and you can have different rules. And we'll show those here in a minute. But for the employee one, I need to give it a name, so I'm going to call it HP Networking Instant On. The security is there, so now you got to accept a security code, and then. If that's all you want to do, then that's great. You can hit done on the top, but you can also hit more options here. And this is where you can get some more advanced features, which you may or may not want. Um, but so IP assignment, you can change if you want um, it to be specific IP assignment uh, addresses. You can also change the bandwidth limit. So I can add a limit. So this would be really good for a uh, guest network. If you don't want a single person to be able to hog up all your internet, you know, downloading a bunch of uh, 4K videos or something, you can change the bandwidth for a specific client so each person connected only gets so much speed and you can also change it uh, per network so you can have a whole network so if you don't want your aggregate guest combined to slow down all your internet you can only give them a part of what you get from your ISP so that you know your office staff always has um, some internet leftovers okay and then here in network access this is where you can allow um, them to either only be able to access certain things so typically for the employee they might have um, access to everything but then a client or a, um, a customer you might want to only give them internet access and not let them access your network so meaning that they could not access your um, computer system or any other devices you have on your network it will only route them out to the internet or you could give them a specific IP so if they do need to be able to go to a specific place you could add that in here as well and then wireless options this is where you can select you know if it wants to be uh, 2.4 or 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi um, you can do the um, multiple client optimization you can optimize for video streaming so if you want um, to set up your network uh, more detailed this is where you can also do that here Okay, and then the bottom one is network assignment. So this allows you to select um, which devices will be accepting client connections uh, to this network. So for me, obviously, I only have one uh, device, so I don't have an option here. But if I had multiple APs, I could reserve some of the access points just for customers or just for uh, the employees. So that's um, what these basic settings are here. So now it's going to go ahead and configure this HP networking instant on local network and then I'll be able to connect my tablet to that finally here okay so I'm just going into my Wi-Fi settings on my tablet here and I found that HP networking instant on uh, wireless network I typed in the password alright so there we go my tablet is now connected to that network 
Okay, and lo and behold, there you go. I show up now as a device um, connected to this access point. And so now I can go in here. I can see that I'm good. I'm online. It's an Android device. It gives them the MAC address. You can see how I'm connected um, through the 5 gigahertz radio. My um, signal quality is good, of course. And I can go do a quick speed test here. All right, so we'll run the speed test. Obviously, I'm very close to the unit right here, so this should be giving me close to what the speed I get on my network um, here with the uh, the ISP. All right, so there we go. That's my speed right here. It's 217 down and 54 up, and that is um, you know typical of maybe what I'm getting with this um, ISP with where I'm at right now. All right, so if I look in here a little bit more, you can see I can favorite um, or watch list my clients if I want to. You can get more details. I can also block clients. So if there's a client I don't like and I want to um, block them, that is something that you can do. If I go over here to my topology, again, I only have one device. But if I had multiple devices, you could see how they are laid out in here, where they're connected. I can look and see if they are uh, wireless backhaul or if they're wired backhaul. So if I have a... Um, one of these units that is talking just wirelessly to another one. This would show me here that the uplink was wireless versus Ethernet. Uh, this one obviously is Ethernet here, um, and it would give me some more information. It would tell me how many um, uh, data is traveling through the Ethernet cable, tell you how many clients are connected to it, um, and you can also you know, disable the lights and stuff if you want that. There are some other network tools you can use for testing the connectivity to them. So it has some like um, good little basic uh, troubleshooting uh, topics in here as well. And then again, like I said, if you had multiple units, you could see a topology here where you could visualize how they're connected to um, back to the internet as well. And then here, the other thing you can look at is really the applications that were used. You can also control some of them more in here as well. But you can see I've only been on, you know, whatever it is, 18 minutes or something. And this shows you um, where that data has been going through. Obviously, if you want to block some of these uh, segments, you could do that. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can actually click through here to do it. You can also just click the, the shield in the bottom right. And this is the policies tab. So right now, so there's no policies. So I just started this, but I can hit the plus sign. And I can do either a network policy or an application policy. So application includes um, different types of content. So I can select uh, to block for example and then I can um, add a um, uh, area that I want to block so you know if I don't want to select all but if I want to block adult content even explicit comment if I don't want people to do gaming I can block that if I don't want uh, malicious or risky I can block that you know if I don't want um, even my employees or something doing social network I could take those off as well but here I can block those and then I can go back and this is going to show me that four of the um, 16 categories I have blocked. So I'm going to just call this, uh, I can just give it whatever name I want. And I can say it's unwanted and it's blocked application access. I can go in here and change it. I can enable and disable it whenever I want. All right, so on the policies, I can also do a network. So a network um, activation, this is where I'm really going to set up um, what networks. And I only have one, of course. Um, is um, what rule is applied so I can activate or deactivate some of my other application policies so I can click deactivate I can give this a name you can have them in different orders as far as higher or lower um, priority and then obviously again I only have one uh, policy but if I wanted to include a different policy or not and um, you know again imagine if this if I had lots of wireless networks if I had like five or six um, and then I wanted to kind of pick and choose where my policies are applied to. You could do that in here, and I can just pick and choose those, and I can even set a schedule for when those policies are applied. But I'm not going to do that in this case here. Overall, your uh, main page here, the top, that green is just going to give you the overall health. You can see 100%. You know, so I'm all up. I'm stable. I have no issues. I can see how many clients I have. I just have my one client. How many networks? Again, you could have multiple networks going. I can see how much data I transferred. I can see how many online devices, how many access points or routers I have on this system. Okay, well, what I want to do now is test my coverage in this space. So in my office here, I have about 2,500 uh, square feet of uh, area that I'm going to walk around and see how the heat map coverage is for this unit placed right here. 
All right, so I went around. This app is kind of a cool app that I uh, I have. It's called NetSpot, but it allows me to go around and do a heat map of the Wi-Fi. Now, for this one, I'm having just the um, this single AP25 uh, unit uh, on and um, monitoring it. And so where my little guy is there in the middle where it says minus 28, that's basically where this unit is at. And then I walked around kind of the perimeter of um, this floor and I did a survey at each of those circles and then it maps it all together and then it shows you kind of this heat map of where the signal is. So the green means I have really good signal and then yellow is like, you know, medium. And then as you start to get red, then you're starting to get worse signal. But even in my farthest corner, and now you don't see any of the walls, uh, there's walls and stairs and um, kind of an HVAC mechanical room that's right about here. And that's where I get my worst signals. There's a lot of uh, duct work and all that kind of fun stuff in there. But my lowest, I think, is about 60, yeah, 64 or so, the furthest away. So this easily covers the 2,500 square feet of this floor um and you know i think i think i still showed three out of four bars on my wi-fi signal and i think that's actually connected to the five gigahertz which um you know doesn't cover as far as the uh, 2.4 yeah so overall this does a, a good job it does cover a lot of space and then it has really good speed all right so that's uh really all there is to this setup is is very simple and easy and if i could click here on the health and i can go to these events this is where I can also see a timeline of different things that happen if things went offline or more clients connected. Um, you can see here, I mean, at 9.12, I created the site. And at 9.21, I was already connected and I created my network uh, for wireless. And then I had my first uh, tablet connected. So literally within 10 minutes, um, I had this guy uh, unboxed, installed, you know, firmware updated, network created. Um, in adding another one, an AP is actually even easier because you've already established your site and you just plug it in, uh, connect to it and tell it that it's an AP, not a router. And it's going to adopt all these settings that we just went through and set up and it will just be extending your network uh, further down the line in your building or your office or outdoors even with their outdoor units. I guess that's something that's important to uh, call out is they do have a lot of different options for their AP units. And this is just one of them, and this is the biggest one. They do have outdoor ones. They also have ones that um, have a little built-in Ethernet uh, port, so it's like a little mini uh, hub. I think it has uh, two uh, additional Ethernet ports that you can then use to um, connect other devices that are just uh, hardwired, like a, a terminal or a console or a computer, as you need. So if you have any questions, do put them down in the comment below. I do actually read the questions, and I will answer them if appropriate. And then, of course, stay tuned for more videos as I continue to put them out. So thanks for watching. Take care.